I'm going to be reviewing Heroes of Navia, it is a very exciting play to earn games guys, I cannot wait to play it, it has, well I'm going to get into details once I start reviewing the game but just to give you a quick outlook guys, this is a game that is very exciting, I got a lot of fundings from very well known investors, a very well known guild as well, as a team of AAA pretty much you know game developers so I'm really excited to talk about it. This game is a blockchain based builder game where you get the chance to have your own base and command an army of warriors, super troops, and your base will be able to compete with other bases in the game. You'll have different advantages. You're gonna have the opportunity to upgrade your assets on different characters and FT on your base, be able to lead your army of infantry, vehicle, and air, which is a very interesting concept too because it's kind of using like a rock, paper, scissor, uh, you know, where like, uh, for for example, the infantry has an advantage over the air, which has the advantage over another unit, and then, and then that unit has an advantage over the, the infantry. So it's kind of it's kind of like a rock, paper, scissor type of environment. In this game, you're gonna be able to earn money as well because this is a play to earn game. A lot of things to unpack here. It's a really exciting one. The best way to kind of like picture this game is kind of like Clash of Clans. I'm sure some of you guys are familiar with uh, Clash of Clans. A very very popular game on mobile where you get the opportunity to like fight against other people but if you remember Clash of Clans it was very much a, a play to win where like people that had the most money could, could buy can kind of buy their way to get more asset to be, have an advantage in the game and we don't want that this is why this thing is getting very exciting so if you guys don't remember Clash of Clans this is kind of how it looks like a very popular mobile game on Google Play and App Store I think this game was making more than a million dollar a day. It was insane. They were making so much money. I don't know if you guys remember some of those graphics, but we're getting the wheel of death here. This is not happening. So just to give you a sense of the gameplay of Clash of Clans before I, I we turned back and talked about uh, Heroes of Mavia, uh, this is kind of quickly how it used to look like. You know, you have different bases, you have to defend your base, you have to have like, some defensive, some offensive strategies, and kind of to win against other players. And then that was a very highly competitive game, very popular. If you guys played this game before, let me know in the comment below. Uh, I would love to, to hear about your experience with uh, Clash of Clans. Then after that, we'll probably compare it with uh, this one. Heroes of Mavia is getting inspiration from uh, Clash of Clans and Axie Infinity, which we are all very familiar here in Astronaut because we were the Axie Space Guild. We still have the Axie Space Guild as a sub guild. So they took some aspect of Clash of Clans and Axie Infinity, kind of put it together with inspiration from other type of game. And they made Heroes of Mavia. And we're going to walk through the gameplay, but here's the Twitter of the game. If you guys want to follow it, it's at slash Mavia game. This game was built by a studio called Strice Studio. Really, really strong team of senior and lead developer only because the CEO doesn't hire junior developer. He only wants to have the best of the best in the company. All the people working in this team are all either senior developer or used to be team lead or leads. So really, really, really strong team, guys, again. Like, look at this, all the art, all the art that they're doing here, guys. This is so exciting. It's a team of at least like 60 developers. They're hiring like additional 3D designer out of Paris, France. It's a global team around the world. They have a lot of open position that they're adding to the team, probably based on this new funding that just arrived. They are really, really investing into creating the best game for everybody. This is the entire team that they're using just for making the trailer of the game. Just for making the, a simple trailer, they have a team of what? There's so many people here. Almost 9 to 10 people in this team. Oh my god, it's even more than that, guys. Those, those were categories. So there's like, there's like a ton of people. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Almost 6 by, six by 10, guys. So many people involved in this game just for making a trailer. It's crazy. All right. So let's see some of the concept art of the game. Look at the CEO art and tech direction. Such a high quality type of design for a game. So you can already see that the CEO himself has a background in art and development. And then when you look at the supervisor of CG, so special effect and so on, it has work in AAA franchise such as Assassin's Creed, Call of Duty, Canal Plus, Sherlock Gnomes, Rupert. Look, look at all those previous work here. Really incredible, Final Fantasy 15. Insane. This is one of the artists as well. 
Look at the quality of the design again. All the things that you're seeing are triple A type of design. Triple A, triple A, triple A here, guys. Heroes of Mavia recently raised a lot of money from various backers. Just take a look at this, guys. They raised money from Binance Lab, from Genblock Capital, Mechanism Capital, Delphi Digital, Yield Guild. So many famous names here, Merit Circle, Avocado Dao. So many famous investors put money into this game, guys, and this is very promising. Binance Lab was leading this investment round, actually. They put 5.5 million seed round for Heroes of Mavia. And I think this is also why, I'm, I mean, I'll explain it a little bit more in detail toward the end of the stream, but essentially they are not going to have a typical ICO or some of the sort. They're technically going to have an IEO, so initial exchange offering. And I think it's, it's mainly part due to the fact that they're partnering with Binance. Very exciting, got a huge running from Binance. So you can get purchased like 330,000 strategic base builder in Mavia. Yildil game has been known in the play to earn ecosystem to always make the right move when it comes to investment. They were early on Axie Infinity, they were also early on Pegasi and a lot of people kind of followed suit. So they tend to usually make the right move when it comes to the investment. And so this is why I'm always really keeping like a close eye on whatever Yield Guild game is doing in terms of investment, seeing what kind of game they're investing on. And actually, I found out about this game through Yield Guild game. Another big investor here is another giant guild, just like Yield Guild game, Merit Circle. Another big investor here is another giant guild, just like Yield Guild game, Merit Circle, who had a, a strategic investment with Heroes of Mavia. They've invested $200,000 in a private sale and acquire a couple of assets in the game as well. Again, one more guild investing heavily on it is AAG Venture Partners with 335,000 purchase of lands and assets. So guys, let's talk a little bit more about this game. So they haven't released it yet, but the marketplace is going to be very similar to like an Airbnb type of models. Uh, where people will be able to uh, actually buy land and rent the land that they have. Kind of like Airbnb, you know, if they're not using the base, they can rent out the base to other people. Because in order to start playing this game, you will have, we need to have at least one base. And I believe that it was mentioned in one of the AMA that you can have up to four player per base. If you've played Axe Infinity in the past, you probably familiar with this kind of layout where you have the land part, the characters, and the items. The only difference is that the marketplace will be very similar to like an Airbnb type of model, where you'll be able to rent out your things directly from there. You also have the explorer that will show you all the live matches, the live game. For example, if you remember playing Clash of Clans, you had recording of battles, you could watch people battling live, and it's an opportunity for you to get better at the game, seeing how people are playing. In Mavia, you'll be able to actually watch players play live. So there are going to be a couple of heroes and characters that you're going to be able to buy. This is like a quick overview of how the account is going to look like. You have the profile, your ruby, your properties, your ledger, notification, favorite settings, and so on. You're also going to have a way to explore all users. Like I was saying earlier, this game is kind of bringing two worlds together. It's bringing the world of Axie Infinity, it was a blockchain-based game, play-to-earn model, NFT asset and collectible, JAL token models, scholarship, partnership, and so on and NFT Marketplace, and Clash of Clans, which is the typical AAA ga franchise game with base building, game concept, uh, online multiplayer gaming, so you're playing as many people as you can, live streaming, replaying of battle, leaderboards, profile stat, decoration, skins, customization, upgradable buildings, characters, and items. From the get-go at the beginning of this game, you'll be able to upgrade not only your land, but also your heroes. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the gameplay. In the gameplay, you'll be able to build your ground and air force, assemble your defensive army, level up your HQ, maximize your walls and tower, deploy traps and decoy, and upgrade your NFT heroes. So the game has three types of NFTs. We're going to talk about the first one. The first one is a base NFT. So the base NFT will be required in order to play the game, guys. So for anyone that want to play the game, you're going to have to own a base. So if you can participate in a whitelist, which is, by the way, going on right now, this is the right time to get on it. And then you can get one of those assets just by contributing. I'll show you guys toward the end of this stream how to get into the whitelist. It's still open. It was supposed to close a couple days ago, but they kept it open for a longer period and they added more assets to the whitelist. So right time to get into it right now, guys. 
So each base is a unique NFT which can be resold on the marketplace, rented out for passive income, or placed into a partnership agreement for a new user to use the base and split Ruby profit 50-50 with the owner. I really love that concept of Airbnb type of game where you could have your own base and let's say for example if you own the base you don't have the time to play the game right now but you want someone else to keep playing your game and upgrade your base so you can rent out your base to someone else they can upgrade your base and then by the way in this game because you can upgrade your asset you can sell them back into the marketplace so for example if you're really good at upgrading bases you can literally turn that into a business where you buy a base you upgrade it you sell it to someone and keep going and so on and so on unlike some other games like cash of clans where you were able to buy you know the best if you had the money in this one even if you buy the best base, the best upgradable base, it will essentially put you in competition with the top players. The higher your level, the higher the component. So they won't have the type of issues that you get in Axie Infinity where uh, you have bot taking advantage of the system because the, essentially the higher you level, the more complex the gameplay because you need to have a lot of skills in order to compete at the highest level. So if someone showed up and it's like, I'm going to spend a million dollars on my base or whatever, but then they're going to have to come in with the best of the best of the best in the game and you need to win in order to earn Ruby. So that won't be in their best interest. You, what's the point of owning an expensive base if you don't end up winning, right? So. That game incentivizes gradual skills improvement so that people get better and better and better and compete at different level, upgrade their base at different level, and so on. Upgrading a base each level also increases the daily maximum Ruby earning limit, which will incentivize players to reinvest their Ruby earning into their base instead of withdrawing it from the ecosystem. As the player grows their base and upgrade the army and building, the upgrades are permanently attached to the NFT, growing the economic value of the base. Another thing that is mentioned is that a single player can own control multiple bases. So you, you know how I was saying, talking about the limit of how many characters you can have on one base? Well, you could have multiple bases and add different characters in different bases in order to, you know, to defend it and attack and so on. And they say similar to how a landlord can own multiple houses and rent them out. Yeah, pretty straightforward here. Bavia Island is technically this empty island and then a bunch of people suddenly decide to go and inhabit this island. They say it's like the new gold rush, the islands of opportunity. So it'd be an island, a uh, land of opportunity for people. And then all the assets in the game will be upgradable because people are populating the land of Mavia and slowly, slowly getting better, you know, things get upgraded. Start at a, you know, like middle age level, then go to a renaissance level. The building will have like this renaissance look, you know, think like Italy, you know, during the renaissance. And incidentally, the building will evolve into like very futuristic town like Dubai or Las Vegas city. If you've played one of those games, like Settler or Age of Empire, where you can kind of like grow through time, it's kind of like a very similar concept in a, in a sense. If you've played those games, you'll be very familiar with that. Another cool thing about land is that they will allow you to stake your NFT assets. Actually, look at this. Soft staking is a gas-free way of earning reward with your land simply by holding your NFTs in your wallet without selling or transferring them for the duration of the staking lock period. Yeah, this is very exciting because this is encouraging people to actually hold their assets for a longer time, which is, I think is really good for the tokenomics of this game. They've spent a lot of time thinking about the tokenomics. You can tell, when you look at what they've done here in the tokenomics, which we're gonna be talking about very soon, you can tell that they put a lot of effort thinking about a different aspect of that tokenomic in this game. I'm sure everyone is wondering like how much those things will cost. So you have Tropical Common Land, you have Tropical Rare, you have Tropical Legendary. So right now, they're gonna be a 70% supply of common tropical lands, 20% of tropical rare, and then 10% of tropical legendary. And prices would be anywhere between 0.3 ETH and 0.9 ETH. This is the land that they're gonna make available during the whitelist. There's currently 2,000 lands. I believe they've increased that number recently. I'm not sure if they've reflected that on their page yet. You can enter this whitelist, guys, and then get an opportunity to get the land. And then all you have to do is contribute and be a contributor in the community. Uh, you can contribute artwork, you know, video and stuff like that. And I'll show you guys in a little bit. But all you have to do is pretty much contribute. So now the second NFT is a hero NFT. 
And as they grow in strength, they grow in value. This game has the concept of upgradable NFTs. Your asset will grow and over time will become, you know, stronger, bigger, whatever, evolve over time and, and be better. So similar to Basis, each hero is a unique NFT that is limited in quantity. Heroes can only be bought and sold for Mavia token on the marketplace. Essentially, uh, the Mavia token will be the only token you can use to buy assets and sell assets. And the other token, which is Ruby, will be the utility token, and we'll talk about it in a little bit. Heroes can be upgraded with Ruby, increasing their in-game stats, such as attack, defense, speeds, and more. Player can purchase additional skins for heroes. Oh, I'm sick, excited about this. Which can be enabled or disabled at any time. All skin purchased for a hero are permanently attached to the NFT, increasing the hero resale value on the market. All skin can be purchased with Ruby inside of the game, creating another opportunity for players to reinvest their earning into their gaming yeah. asset. Oh my God, I'm excited about this one. Let's go. Let's go. Oh my God. A single player can own as many heroes as they would like, but can only equip four heroes at a time for each base. Heroes can be interchanged at any time. There's gonna be a limit of how many heroes you can have on a base, which is going to create upward pressure on the interest for people to have multiple lands, multiple bases. So I think that if I were to play the game, my strategy will be to have as many bases as possible and then to get my characters, because this way at least I'll have the opportunity to put my character in multiple bases. And, and I could rent out my bases to other people. So in the game, you're also going to have statues and those statues will only provide you economic benefit in the game, but it won't give you the advantage of, for example, uh, having a better attack or a bigger, better offense. And it'd be different type of statues so that the old statue will, will increase your old production. A gold statue will increase your gold production and so on. Statue provide boosts for the base that they are active on and can be upgraded to increase their unique powers. So for example, if you have like an old statue that increases your old production and you upgrade it, you're gonna increase your old production. So it's more of an economic value in the game. Again, you cannot buy your way to more wins in this game. A base can hold up to four statues at any given time. Statue power increases the speed and efficiency of the base, such as resource production, cooldown time, building time, troop training time, and more. So you're gonna have to train your troops in order to win here, guys, remember? A statue can only boost one specific variable of a base, giving the player many options to form a strategy for combining several statues. Similar to heroes and bases, the statues can be viewed on the Mavia Explorer and the use can be tracked on the platform. Yep, you can track everything in the game, which is great. Guys, I think it's time for us to talk about this ecosystem because they, they've, they've thought about it pretty pretty well, guys. I, I have to give them that. Uh, oh my God! Seriously, oh my God. Oh my God! <laughs> All right, before I get into it, let me quickly cover some of the tokenomics. I think it makes more sense as we're looking at that. So there's two tokens. There's the Mavia token, and then there's the Ruby token. The Ruby token is gonna be the utility token used for upgrading. As you can see here, on the exchange, you'll be able to deposit your Ruby into Mavia game with a 10% deposit bonus. So every time you move your Ruby token from an exchange to the game, you're getting a 10% bonus in the game. But let's say you're depositing 100 Ruby, you're gonna get 110 Ruby in the game. And if you go in the reverse way and taking Ruby from the game and moving it back to your wallet, you getting minus 15% withdrawal fee. Whatever is getting withdraw is being burned. And that's a way to kind of like balance the economy. And that's what they're doing that. What they want you to do is to actually go on the right. So take your token from the exchange to put a uh, point pressure on the price because more people are buying the token from the exchange. Then it goes to your wallet, then you put it into the game, they reward you with more of the token. Then you can use that token for upgrading your NFT. Every time you consume that Ruby token, it get burned. You can earn Ruby in game as well. And then when you wanna buy your NFT with Mavia, you're gonna be using your Mavia token in order to buy in the marketplace. So you'll have to convert your Ruby to Mavia within the game and get your asset and then back again you can sell your mavia and buy your ruby and so on this is going to put a really good balance on the game i'm really excited about that all right let's cover some of the ruby use case here guys but essentially you're going to be able to use your ruby for headquarter nft upgrade hero nft upgrade statue nft upgrade purchasing gold and oil uh process speed up so for example if you're like training your troops or 
or, you know, uh, or building something and it's taking so much time, you'll be able to use your Ruby to accelerate the speed of development of that asset. And that Ruby is going to get burned. Again, you know, every time you get burned, this is good for the economy because a lot of people will be earning Ruby. And as you see from your experience with Axie Infinity, when you have too much of a token being produced, it creates an inflation. So too much token in circulation, downward pressure on the price, and then now the token is not as viable as it's supposed to be because not enough of that token is being burned. So what they're doing here, they're trying to essentially solve some of those problems. All right, and then you're gonna be able to use your token for skins and decoration. What are the ways to earn Ruby in the game? So this is the part that we all wanna hear about because this is a play to earn game. So we wanna know how do I earn in this game. You'll be able to earn money in Mavia by winning an attack, successful defense, base obstacles, challenges, partnering base with other players, and wager matches. So Ruby is only created through the successful action of players in the game. The amount of Ruby rewarded depends on their base level, the difficulty of the action, and the other potential variables. When a player attack an opponent and successfully defeat the base with a minimum of 50% damage or more, Ruby is then minted and credited to the player's account. When a defending player base successfully hold off an attacker with 33 damages or less, the defending base owner is credited Ruby to their account. Random obstacle will sometimes appear on the player's base. When they are removed, they reveal hidden Ruby underneath. Incentivize players to check their base daily. If you just want to generate passive income, you can buy bases, renting to other players and do a, a profit share, like a partnership. And you can let them play and upgrade your base. And then once your base get upgraded, you, you can decide to sell your base on the marketplace and then buy more bases and so on and keep going. Finally, player can battle for Ruby with each player putting up an equal amount of Ruby and the winner taking it all. One of the items that they're not mentioning here, they're not mentioning consumable. You're gonna be able to also use your Ruby for consumable. It's not really clear how consumable are going to work, but let's talk about the monetization that you can have on the basis. So inside the Mavia economy, you'll be able to buy and sell your base, rent out your base to people, and do a base partnership. By reaching out your base, you will agree to a fixed daily rate to be paid in Mavia for your base, as well as the duration of the lease. The owner isn't entitled to any of the proceeds of Ruby from the base and only receive the agreed rental fund. So I can agree to say, you rent my base for a thousand Mavia and I don't make any profit. And if you're a really good player, then you can keep all the proceeds. Or we can say, you know what? Let's do a base partnership here, man. I give you 50-50, you know, we do 50-50, you take your 50, I keep my part, and we'll split the ruby. You have the opportunity to do both, guys. Can be a good negotiator, you know, you can do 50, 60, it's up to you guys. So as you can see, they did a private sell. All those investors actually got into the game early on and got to get all those assets. Oh my God, man. I wish I was no, in no, there. No, I wish they, no. they call me and say, hey, buddy, do you want to participate in a private sell? Because I will have gotten so many lands, guys. I want to have a base in this game. I want to have lands here, guys. So 15% of the token went to the private buyers, which is about 37,500 token. Then they allocated 25% to ecosystem fund, 25% for staking rewards. You saw earlier how you can stake your NFT base, land, or whatever, in order to get some rewards from staking it. Then 22% goes to the Strice team, which is developing the game, which is an incentive for them to, to also build it. So 22% token are going to go to the Strice team, 3% are going to go to the advisors, and 10% are going to go to the play to earn, maybe in the future if they decide to implement the Mavia token for the economy. They are keeping those remaining 10% just in case. For just in case they decide to add it in the future. All right, guys. So this game has been building some pretty cutting edge features. One of the features that I was particularly excited about is the API integration that they're going to have. This is very exciting because it's going to be public facing. So anyone will be able to access the API and build uh, on top of that ecosystem. In comparison, if you think about the Axie Infinity, the API is not really open. They give you some links, but it's not fully open. And sometimes you kind of have to figure out things on your own. They're not showing you all the information that you need, which makes it a bit hard to develop for Axie Infinity. And they're going to have in-game Ruby Ledger. And finally, where is this game is going to be released? Well, it's going to be on desktop, mobile, and iOS. So it's going to be on three different platforms. So this is the Mavia Roadmap. 
So where are we right now? So it's a 12 month overview of Mavia development. So we just went through Q4 2021 where they had the community launch and you know the telegram discord the game prototype demo you can already see some leak of the game on the discord game art and graphic releases and now we are in q1 of 2022 where the token launch nft sale will begin we are already seeing the white listing for the nft sales you know the magia token launch is right around the corner staking pools will soon be live the releasing of land heroes and statue is going to happen all during Q1 of 2022, which is what January, February, March, maybe April, and so on. And on Q2 of 2022, they're going to have the alpha testing release and beta testing. They said that the game is pretty much almost ready. The beta will just be like, you know, looking for bugs and minor things that they want to fix and improve on the platform. But all of that is pretty much already built. Like the web platform is already built. And finally, they're going to have a private beta testing. And in Q3 of 2022, public beta launch, public beta testing, web platform release, NFT marketplace launch. And in Q4 of 2022, Mavia Global launch, Ruby token launch, gameplay balancing, additional NFT releases. If you're wondering where we are right now in the ecosystem of this game, we are early. We are right here at the beginning. So this is a great time to get involved. We are so early. And in most ecosystems, it's rare that people have the patience to stay along all the way to the end. Like when you think of Axie Infinity, when the price goes down, some people decide to say, oh, you know what? I'm out. I can't afford this. So the people who, who jump in early and sticks, uh, obviously no investment advice, might be the one that get the biggest reward. And I'm going to make the announcement right now. We are planning to have a scholarship in this game, guys. So let's go. Oh, <laughs> let's go. If you guys want to follow up some of the aspects of the game, you can check them on Medium where you'll be able to learn different things that they might not be sharing on the website. Over here, they're just technically talking about some additional information about the game, the style, you know, the upgradable F NFTs, which we covered already, um, the rent partner and sell program in a little bit more in detail and how the renting out the base will work, uh, base partnership. So all this information is on the blog if you're curious to learn more about it in details. And I believe that the game is going to be releasing on Ethereum and on L2, so on Arbitrum. We're going to have to get familiar with the Arbitrum network. L2 costs are cheaper than on L1, so it shouldn't be too expensive. But uh, one of the concerns that I have is for people to migrate to Arbitrum. But I believe that Binance already have an integration to Arbitrum. Uh, this is something I might need to double check, but if they do, then you should be able to migrate your asset to the game. And guys, once again, guys, my name is Lord Richie. You can follow me on Twitter at RichardsonDX. Guys, if you want to know more information, I'm going to be posting a full-on thread of everything I covered today in this game on the Twitter. And so make sure to follow me on Twitter if you haven't already. I'm going to be posting this thread. If you guys uh, watch the stream or kind of want to know things more in detail, the thread will also have links of all the information that I've been sharing, all the details. So guys, make sure to follow me on the Twitter at RichardsonDX, guys. And don't forget to follow our astronaut Twitter page as well, guys. We are the astronauts, guys. Come support us on the Twitter. Join our Discord. Uh, there's a Discord link here if you miss it from the chat here. Uh, make sure to follow us, yeah. Support support the channel, guys. So if you want to learn more about uh, Heroes of Mavia, there's an uh, AMA session on the YouTube. They've done the session one. The session two was on January 3rd. So you can go and, and read this one. I think the other one is a YouTube video. Uh, but guys, I think we covered it all. Now it's time to talk about the whitelist. Guys, if you go on the webpage on uh, Mavia.com and you go at the top, apply for the land NFT sell whitelist today. You can enter the whitelist and actually get access to buying some of those assets early. So they have the land settler application and it's currently being accepted. So it's, it's active right now. And who are they rewarding? So they, re they have white spot for content creator like myself, community engagement. So if you're active on the Discord, if you help strengthen the Mavia community, the Twitter by retweeting, you know, sharing, great way to get on the whitelist, guys. Uh, people that are sharing art and memes, on our Discord too, if you're sharing Arden memes, guys, you're getting giveaways. Remember that. Uh, 450 whitelist slot for Arden memes and 150 whitelist slot for influencer and call. I'm not sure what KOL means, guys. Uh, comment comment below if you know. I don't. I'm not quite sure. But guys, yeah, they have a whitelist that is really really juicy. So if you want to get access to some of those land, just check this the Mavia.com/whitelist 
and you can watch all the details here where they explain you how to get on wireless um, all the details the here the are explained in details the guys I appreciate every single one of you guys once again my name is Lord Richie thank you for watching I appreciate that and I see you guys on the next one